what up guys this is reflex one again this time around taking you tutorial on picture editing uh not on smudge painting uh adding a pop to a seamless background so you normal seamless studio background this is the before this is the after uh the first step i'm going to, I'm going to teach you on how to add the effect to your picture then i'll teach you how to customize yours by yourself and in case you want to add uh, using this particular tutorial I just dropped now the POP is in the description below just go there and download it from there then apply but in case you want to know how to create your own designs different types for your picture editing uh, after the after me adding this particular one I'm going to teach you a way on how to customize yours yourself so this is my picture I'm I'll be making use of I've already removed the picture from the background so uh, I think most people know how to do that as you can see the picture is no longer in the backdrop again so what I'll just do now is just bring in my POP design then add it to it on Photoshop so I'm going to go to my file manager my file manager over here then I'll pick the POP here this is the POP here then I'll drag it into Photoshop as you can see over here so this is my pop design i customized this myself from scratch and i'm going to teach you guys on how to make yours too so i will extend it till i see fit extend it on the both sides and i drag it i think this is okay like this then i click my ok button once I'm done with that, as you can see, I've already cropped my picture out of the background. So I'm going to drag the POP under the particular picture I just cropped. As you can see now, it's under the picture instead of uh, being above the picture as you see earlier on. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to change the blend mode. I'll change the blend mode. I'll change it to multiply. Boom. I think we have something nice over here. So in case you don't like this particular design, uh, you can just watch my, you can watch to the end because I'm going to be teaching you on how to create a new design for yourself. But I'm, I'm going to be creating this particular design I'm using right now for you. But it's still the same step, just the shapes are going to be different if you want to create your own. And make sure while you are creating stuff like this, please know how to work with your ruler because ruler helps a lot while creating stuff like this. So still to the end guys. So if you want to spice up this your POP background a little bit, uh, you can just customize it a little bit like by adding smooth effects. Uh, on my next tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you guys on how to create your own smooth effect yourself. But I already have my customized smooth effect I'll be using for this particular picture. Uh, I will drop the smooth effects. I'll drop it in the description below, description below too. If you want to download yours and make use of the one I made use of in this particular picture. So let me unlock my background, my group here, then pick it out from here. Snoot effects. So this is my snoot effect over here. As you can see, it spice up my work a little bit, but it's already it's already affecting my uh, my model. So I have to drag it below my model just to make it rhyme. As you can see, I think we have something perfect here now. So for you to customize your own snoot effect yourself. Uh, just drop in the comment section below if you need it. I will to do it for you guys. And please and please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and also turn on the notification icon below. Uh, if you have any question, you can just drop your question in the comment section or message me on WhatsApp or my Instagram handle or my mail and I will reply you in a short amount of time. And also uh, apart from this picture editing, I do smudge painting too. So just click on my channel link, uh, watch all my videos there. I think you learn a lot from there too. And also, I do website design too. And I'll be dropping a video tutorial on how to create a free website uh, without getting to buy a domain or a host free of charge, without any coding skill at all. No coding skill will involve. So, I'll be dropping a video on that too. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and help move the ministry up a little bit god bless you guys but still stay 
stay with me me drafting the pop background for you from scratch so let's, let's jump into creating this node effect yourself so the first thing you need to do is to pick a work layer for yourself your, your work area i mean to say sorry uh i'm going to be using a 5 by 7 so i'm going to click on my control n then i change it to 5 my white to be 5 my i to be 7 pixel and i'll be using resolution of 300 then i click on my ok wait for it to load so the next thing i will do now is to create the color layer go to solid color then pick my color so i'll go with something i'll go with color like this we don't need the we don't need this actual color to achieve what we need uh, i'm only using this color just to know what i'm doing because i'm working on a white uh white objects so me using a white object on a white object i won't be seeing what i'm doing so that's why i pick this color so the color is necessary you can use black you can use green whatever color you choose to use for your background work so the choice is yours for that so the next thing i'll do now is to pick my uh shape tool i'll pick my rectangle tool that's you you can click your u to pick that or you can go there and select it directly so once i done that i will drag the shape over my layer here yeah? you can zoom in to see what you are doing very well so i'll drag the shape over here so as you can see but now we don't need a fill color we need a shape color so i'll just kill my fill i'll have the fill over here then uh my stroke i'll make my stroke white so I will make the size either 4 or 3 uh, let me go with 3 I think the 4 is too thick I'll go with 3 so once we're done with that okay I think let's go with 4 let's go with 4 I'll select my 4 so once we're done with that we'll make sure it's at the center we can just use our pick tool to take to the center so once I'm done with that next thing i need to do is to hold my alt key then drag to the left as you can see over here so i will leave once i leave the alt key i will still hold the same alt key again then drag to the right as you can see over here but we don't know if the lines are perfect maybe they are straight so that's when we pick our ruler so i'll pick my ruler over here to gauge it so i think we have some issue down here it doesn't rhyme with the one we've seen with the left one so i'll just use my directional key to make it perfect then go to this one also use my directional keys to make it perfect uh me clicking on each object and the uh photoshop responding is because i'm using auto select if you are not using auto select you can never achieve what i just did now by clicking on each object at a time and the object respond, uh, responding directly to what you just did so once you're done with the first uh, shape the next thing to do is to draw the little little box inside so i'm still going to go to my rectangle tool also rectangle tool then i'll still draw another shape inside too still draw another one inside This time around, I'll make the size to 2 pixel. So as you can see, here's my 2 pixel over here. Then I'll go back to my pick tool again. Then I'll make sure it's centered. Make sure it's centered with the... Make sure it corresponds as in the square is in the middle. So I'll move it down a little bit. I think you have something nice here. But the issue now is that the edge over here is showing. And we don't need that. So I'll just control T again on it then drag it as you can see we are no longer seeing it there so now i will still drag it from the center here to both the left and also the right at the same time so what i will just do now is just to hold my alt key down again then i drag i drag it Once I'm done with that, then I remove my hand on the left click, 
so then I do same thing to the right hand side again alt I drag it until it corresponds sorry then I leave it but we still know if the lines are actually straight so we still need to pick our ruler too again pick our ruler drag it to the edge to see if, it's if it corresponds then we zoom in a little bit to find out as you can see this both sides they correspond but our right hand side over here doesn't match so i'll just use my pick tool then my down direction to make it i, I, I align with the boots so i think we're done with the top aspect so the next one we need to do now is to go to the middle uh, the middle aspect now this time around we are also still working with our uh what do you call it our ruler also so before we go to the other boxes why not create a line at the middle to make it look realistic, uh, realistic enough so i'll still pick my rectangular tool also then i'll drag at the middle i'll drag it making the stroke 4 again so making the stroke 4 again i think the thing is too small so i'll just enlarge it a little bit so what i want to do is still hold my alt key to duplicate it then i drag it down a little bit as you can see so the next thing to do is now i need one tiny one at the middle not much as thick as this two so what i'll do now is to i duplicate this one also this one right there i can still hold my alt key down then drag it to the middle all i need to do now is just to reduce the size I'll just click on my Ctrl T, free transform to then I drag from here. I think we have it perfect right here. So I'll just have to align them because the spacing between them are not that much. So I'll just drag them as you can see over here. I think we have something perfect over here. Okay. So now the next thing we need to do now is to draw the last uh, box. So we're doing that now. I'm still going to pick my rectangle too. But if I do that, I need to align the sides with the one at the top. So I'll, I'll just have to drag my ruler to the middle. As you can see, pick another ruler. Uh, if you're familiar with Photoshop, uh, with logo designs, uh, you understand what I'm doing right now. But if you don't know, this is the best time for you to learn. I want everything to be on a straight line. We don't want it to deform. We don't want to lose its shapes. We want it to align with each other. So that's the reason why we are using a ruler. So I think we're done with the uh, out, outer, uh, out, outer post now. So it's for we now to go for the inner ones. I mean those tiny tiny ones. So I'll still pick up the ruler again. Zoom in a little bit to see what I'm doing very well. Then I drag it. There. as you can see so I do the same thing here too I drag it here too same thing go for the last one too so I think we are good to go now so the next thing we need to do now is just to drag I can decide to create a new shape or I can drag the one I just drew from up there, drag them below, then customize them till I see fit. So let me just create a new one from here. I pick up my rectangle too. So I drag. As you can see, I'm working with the lines right now. Boom. I think I'm done with that. So I go to the left hand side too. But now we have to make the ones we are drawing here too. We have to make them align with this one right there. So I also drag a ruler down here too. 
to make it rhyme and also a ruler up here too so once i'm done with the ruler i have to create my shape right now drag it from left i'll make sure it correspond with the ruler, ruler i drew the other time as you can see you can see why but it's still showing the shape at the edge but i don't want that so all i need to do now is just to control t it free transform then drag it as you can see over here the line is no more there so the next thing i do right now is to go to the right hand side to do the same thing there but as you can see right now i'm working with the ruler and i think that is making my work a little bit neater once i correspond with the ruler again i remove my hand as you can see i've drawn i've drew all the shape so right now it's for me to draw the inner shape of the objects so i also be using ruler for the inner shape too but let me draw the first one i'll pick step, use, i'm still on my rectangle too right now so i'll pick i'll pick it from the middle as you can see i'm still working with my ruler right now But I think uh, I made a little mistake with the earlier with the ruler earlier. So I'm going to correct it here right now by leaving it at this side. So once I'm done, but well, the shape is too thick for to be the inner one. So what I'll do now is just to re reduce it. I'll make it two. So I'll do the same thing to both the left and the right hand side too. So I'll go there. But before I do that, let me pick up my ruler to align it with one another the up and the down so my ruler is good to go so I st I'm still on my rectangle too so I draw it I leave it also so go to the right hand side too same thing there sorry I draw it uh, it's still not in line with the ruler go back again by pressing ctrl z uh, i draw it then we are good to go we're good to go we're good to go so that's that for the drawing so the last part is for we just to draw the background side i uh, just make it look as if the tot is actually real not necessary though if you are snapping up a portrait picture but just you might need for a full picture too like the one i did earlier on the picture so i'll just draw a straight line at the bottom so i'll draw a straight line here serving as the background as the ground of the background so i'll still make it for two so i think you're good to go so after doing everything now What I need to do now is for me to group all everything I've created so far, group them in a single layer by cl clicking on Ctrl G. Then I'll go to my blending option. So everything we need to do right now is just to mix, mix it our blending option. And we can use drop shadow. We can use drop shadow. We can use outer glow. Uh, we can use inner glow we can use inner shadow just the way you see fit the way you can ma manipulate your tools so i'll just go to my shadow drop first it's already activated as you can see it's already creating a shadow it's already creating shadow for us so uh, i think uh the shadow is a little bit too small so i can just increase it let me make it 10 then spread it a little bit Red. let's put it on five then our distance let's make our distance uh, six as you can see it's looking much nicer I'm looking more realistic enough so after that I will go to my outer glow outer glow I can just change it to black change the color to black then change the blend mode to normal so I can just increase it, spread, 
maybe five. So TIC fade, but this one is too much. Let's just make the spread. Uh, let's make it three. Uh, let's reduce some back a little bit. So we'll go back to our shadow. But I think the thing is too dark. So all we need to do now is just to reduce our opacity. As you can see, we already reduced the opacity of the shadow drop. So once I off my shadow drop now, as you can see, everything is gone. So I click on my shadow drops back again. I think we have a nice outcome over here. So I think that's that about that. Just what you need to do now is just to merge everything together, then export it as PNG. Whenever you need to use it for your design, just go to where you saved it, then pick it, apply it on your picture, then you are good to go. So thank you guys, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and also turn on the notification icon below. Uh, if you have any questions, just DM me. And also I have some loot files, some professional loot files for sale, uh, presets for color grading, beauty retouch and every other thing. If you are in need of any photographic software gadgets, just let me know I'm the right guy. Thanks guys, see you on my next class.